Welcome to Talk Bowling, episode 73. I'm John Congdon. I'm Tony Rucco. And I'm Rich Garuba. Talk Bowling is proud to be bringing you the latest information from the bowling industry, bowling tips, and updates on the largest internet bowling website, bowlingball.com. You have to watch the last episode to get that. I practice that in the shower before we shoot. <laughs> I don't even need that sheet anymore. I well, then I'm going to stand out from <laughs> I will destroy the sheet for you. Man. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Get into it. All right. As you can see, we have Rich Garuba with us again. And we went through his bio on episode 70. 70. 70. Not 70 something. Yes, yeah, just 70. You're sick of questions about yourself, but that's okay. <laughs> you said you were a former bowling radio talk show host and producer. Tell us a little bit more about that. Years ago, I was on uh, staff, John, in... Uh, of the uh, Coast Resorts properties in Las Vegas. We built the Gold Coast, and then we built the Orleans Bowling Centers. <clears throat> so in order to promote the bowling in that area, we started a radio show, and I was a producer and a host of a half-hour weekly talk show on a 50,000-watt clear channel, uh, 10 Western states. Uh, my uh, boss, the gentleman that owned the hotels, Michael Gaughan, his father, Jackie Gaughan, one of the pioneers of Las Vegas, uh, had a radio station inside one of his hotels in downtown Las Vegas. It's still there. It's called the Union Plaza. And I would go in every week and we would can a show for 30 minutes. And I would always I could interview a lot of the, the great bowling champions and friends of mine in the industry uh, <clears throat> from remote locations. And I'd build it in and we'd do the tip of the week and we'd do just interviews and just talk about different things in bowling. Well, you know, typically over the years, bowling radio programs or anything like that weren't extremely successful. I did have several advertisers, all the hotels, so we did last two years. But I think you're only as good as your replacement. So when I went off the air, they brought in a show about UFOs. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe I didn't rock. <coughs> excuse me, I didn't rock the bowling world uh, as much as I had hoped to. But it was a lot of fun, and uh, you know, it was fun to try to share information with the people that like bowling. And you were replaced by aliens. Yes. So, there you go. Not many people can say that. Well, thank you. It's an honor. <laughs> All right. Um, we get into a question of the week, I guess. Uh, I'll have a question of the week because we're not doing those right now, but a viewer question. Well, a viewer question, correct. A question viewer. of this episode. All right. From Big Phil. Big Phil says, I've got a question or a problem. I ha I'm having trouble with my thumb. Sometimes it slips and I drop the ball, so I end up gripping it harder, so I end up almost following following, uh, the, ball. following the ball down the lane. I'll help you read. Wow. I've had a... I <laughs> had a been told... I had been told, I'm assuming that's supposed to say. I have been told to use tape or to get ovals put in. So I was wondering if you had any suggestions or advice. This would really... This is really starting to hurt my game. I bowl a 165 average, but I'm struggling to hit 150. So any help would be appreciated. So, question or a problem? I'm going to go with it's a problem right now. Yeah, from a, I guess we could give two different perspectives. From a pro shop perspective, it sounds like you need to get your grip changed. Uh, or to check, I shouldn't say changed. You should not have to grip the ball at all. And when you look at, I remember back in the day, we used to judge who bowled the most by how torn up their thumb was. And then I was at a, a regional and I looked at a touring player's thumb and it, it, clean. it, it was fine. It was large, but it was clean. There were no right. tears, there was no worn skin, there were no calluses, it was clean. And and even though I had been, I grew up in the pro shop, I had always tinkered with my own stuff. So I finally went back, talked to Keith, and you shouldn't have to do any of that. You shouldn't have any blisters, any calluses. Your thumb should go in and out of the ball cleanly. So from the pro shop then, I would say get your fit checked. Absolutely. <laughs> Usually everyone has uh, holes that are t too uh, too wide, too, right. too open, particularly the thumb hole. <clears throat> and you start, the knuckle bends, and you start squeezing, and you start grabbing more and more, and then you get irritation on the, th uh, the back of the right. thumb or whatever. No good. Not needed. Nice straight fit of the fat part of your thumb, the flat part of your thumb. Uh, you should have a little more gripping pressure on your fingers than your thumb. And it should exit cleanly and smoothly every time. That's the objective, and the pro shop should help you fit, uh, get the right fit. And don't be afraid to use bowler's tape if your thumb contracts when you bowl. Put a little piece in there, then you can remove it if it starts expanding again. But you get the right fit, you won't have that problem. Right. And we've talked about it in many episodes. I use protective tape just for that reason alone. And it's a good idea. It, it helps snug up the thumb so I don't have to grip at all. Sure. Well, you might have, do you, does your thumb perspire? 
yeah. when you will. Some people's hands are very <coughs> very dry, others perspire. So you gotta find the right little t uh, technique uh, or combination right. of things uh, that fit you. But um, it all starts with the proper grip, get to the pro shop, have them double check. Definitely, and, and so you know what ends up happening is as you grip, obviously, like Rich said, you're going to develop some wear on the back of your thumb. The other thing that's going to happen, though, is instead of you being able to get your hand out of the ball cleanly and at the same point every time, now you have to also remember to release that pressure of your thumb hole to get your thumb out cleanly. So you may go up there one time, you do that correctly, your thumb comes out, the ball comes off your hand perfectly. Next time you go up there, you're a little late, you don't release your grip a little bit, and your your ball hangs on. That's where you're on. I think you're saying you're following the ball down the way. What does release mean? Let go. Let go. Get it out of there. <clears throat> and that's what exactly what you need to do. Yeah. Not, not grab on and hang on. Right. So, so that's that's our suggestion to you, <clears throat> Phil. Hope that helped. Yep. What's next? What's next, next uh, we're going to continue our talks about. Oh, the, you drew arrows. See, I missed for myself. I wasn't in this conversation. You were. Uh, we're going to continue our talks about Bullversity section of our website. Uh, for those of you who haven't seen our previous episodes or haven't checked out Bullversity.com lately, uh, along the top bar, we have a new section that says Bullversity. It had a little new tag, but it's been a month or so, so we took that off. But if you click on that, you'll get a little menu, or you can use our, our drop-down menu to see all the different sections. And uh, we're going to do articles, videos, all kinds of things in this section. It's like our little place to help give you content. It's it's our bullversity. It's our us trying to teach, help, you know, give tips and advice. Right. So today we're gonna talk about what we're gonna give to the intermediate bowler. And and where do you class where are we classifying an intermediate bowler at in our minds if we were gonna well, use average it is or, arbitrary. Uh, right. What we've done now is we have an everyone uh, experience level and then a beginner experience level, you know, newcomers of the game, then intermediate, uh, advanced and highly skilled. Even at the highly skilled, we're not thinking about the, the, the top professionals and turning players. We're thinking about you good players out there that might be scratch bowlers, 200 right. average bowlers. Intermediate could be people that have bowled for many years and could be anywhere from 135 or 140 average to 160. The average range is not as important as people who uh, maybe are looking to learn a little bit more uh, about what they do and how, how they can make some little improvements or progress to get their average up. Uh, so it has nothing really to do with an average range or a skill level as much as it has to do with uh, uh, people who have been bowling for a while that uh, maybe don't spend a lot of time practicing or right. trying to gear their game up to a better level but now uh, are interested in doing it. Like my golf game. Yes. <laughs> when you stop slicing as much, you move into intermediate. Ah. Nice. That's where I'm at. Yes. I like it. Okay. I, I give intermediate. <clears throat> Beginners are the people that really throw the ball straight in my mind and they're starting to learn how to hook the ball. Yeah. They're really just beginning. Intermediate, you kind of have a little bit of technique. You could be a league bowler. Right. You, you know, can make sure. the ball hook. Sure. But, you know, we all start at a lower average and we're trying to build up. So you got to start somewhere. All right. So check that out. Yes. And this this week's website feature to talk about are our. our, our our reviews. There's a lot of R's in that little yeah. statement. All oh, right. We did. We were one of the first site to offer reviews on products, um, especially bowling products. Uh, we always try to give you the customer as much information as possible, and we feel reviews are a strong way to do that. Yeah. This is where you're going to see in this section. If you if you haven't used our review section before, you're going to find a lot of good information. You're going to see reviews by us. Uh, by our staff, uh, by our staff of pro shop managers, and you're also going to see probably what's most important to most of you is other customer reviews. You're going to see what the guy that bought it last week says about it. He got a drilly through and he likes it. Or even if it's a shoe, you can put a review on any product we sell on bowlingball.com. Right. So you can go put a product on a grip bag if you get one a of our bowlingball.com grip bag. Or I'm sorry, a review. If you get one of our grip bags and you really like it, and you think it, it just feels good in your hand and you like the size and everything, you can go put a review about that. And what, what I like about the review, excuse me, John, is uh, we ask people to be honest, just give us their honest impression about it and post that information and, uh, and that's what we do. So every review isn't a rave, raving review, uh, we just try to, try to communicate information and we think will help you so you can make the right decision in your equipment acquisitions. Exactly. How's that? Perfect. And you have to have an account to write a review and one of the features of having an account or you can put in your attributes, you can put in what your ball speed is, what your uh, average is. So by putting that information in and writing a review, you're telling other people that read the review 
hey, I'm a 180 average bowler, and I really like this ball, and here's why. Or I don't like this ball, and here's why. So now I come in, I'm averaging 180, I read your review, and it helps me kind of get a better impression overall. And again, we're one of the only websites that offer that kind of detail. Right. And you can check it out. There's there's links all over the site to it. We offer uh, ways for you to see the, the most recently reviewed balls, the top 10 reviewed balls, uh, bag shoes. We do it for all the categories. We do, you can see reviews on pre-order products. Uh, most of the time when you look at a review on a pre-order product, it is probably going to be from us or from a staff member of that ball company because obviously the ball's not on the market yet so it's most likely not going to be on a customer level right and then you can see reviews of new releases as well so exactly and i always say we listen to our customers feedback when somebody asks us for something we try to accommodate as much as possible one of the <coughs> things i've most recently done is we offer a lot of ball towel combos and when we have a combo or a package that we have for sale we show reviews of all the products in there because it's not always just the towel, right. sometimes it's polished. So we kind of bring all those reviews into that same product. And it was a little confusing to customers. So now when you go to that product, it'll say show reviews of just the ball or show reviews of the polish. So while there may be 100 reviews for all the products, right. you, can, you can narrow it down and say just show me the, the reviews of the ball. Right. And that's something I just recently done because of customer feedback. Right. So we like it, we listen to it, give us more. There you go. And if you want to contact us, there's many ways. You can email us questions at talkbowling.com, leave a comment on any episode of Talk Bowling, this is episode 73, or on Twitter we are at Talk Bowling. Yeah, and if you, if you have a question or concern more about the website, you can also let them know. And you can do that through supportedbowlingball.com, you can check out our live chat feature, okay, or you can... Uh, I guess that would be it, wouldn't it, for the website? Yep. Yeah. Um, on the, Email live chat. Yeah. The top right of every page of Ballinball.com is a live, live, live chat, chat button, which they're great at. I mean, they're on there all the time talking with people. Yep. So. Okay. Who's, who's our sponsor, John? Oh, who's it going to be this week? I don't know. All right. This episode is brought to you by GoDaddy.com. Starting at less than $5 a month, web hosting from GoDaddy includes 99.9% .9 uptime, 24-7 support, and free access to the GoDaddy hosting connection, the place to quickly install over 30 free applications, sure to help you get the most from your hosting plan. GoDaddy also provides a free iPhone, Android, or BlackBerry app, so you can order directly from your phone or manage your accounts and domains easily. Plus, stockpiling viewers can enter promotion code BOL8 to save an additional 10% off any order during checkout. Some restrictions apply. See site for details. Get your piece of the internet at GoDaddy. All right. We should probably have different ad copies. On it's got to be around Christmas time now, doesn't it? We would be, yeah, around the second week. Okay. It's getting close to Christmas time. Yeah, so if you haven't ordered your gifts yet, you need to do it now. That's right. Get on there and do we it. Should, we should probably figure out the dates he's going to come <laughs> That's what I'm going to do in our next break. <laughs> That's probably the smart thing to do. <laughs> All right, go ahead and close it up, John. My throat's tired. Yeah. I'm going to get sick in the next episode, so I don't have to read as much. That's, <laughs> that seems to be the way to go. In closing, please remember that BowlingBall.com is free shipping on every item every day. No hidden handling fees, no packaging fees, no added insurance fees. The price shown on the product page is the price you pay at checkout. No surprises. Okay, it's not necessarily the price you pay at checkout because you can add multiple products. Well, I can but, it. But that's the price you're going to take for that product. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Thank you. See you next time. <laughs>